Hello and welcome to another eMath Instruction Common Core Algebra 1 lesson. I'm Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be looking at unit number one, lesson number six on seeing structure in expressions. All right, throughout the entire lesson today, what we're really going to be doing is thinking about a really fundamental tenet of the Common Core math curriculum, which is the idea of a mindful manipulation. See, very often when you do algebra, you end up applying a lot of properties, doing a lot of manipulations, you're, you're distributing numbers, you're, you're combining like terms, you're solving for x, you're graphing y, etc., etc. And many times people kind of look at algebra as just a collection of mindless algorithms, mindless recipes. So what we want to do each and every time we're playing around with this commutative, associative, and distributive properties, we want to be using them for a reason. We want to be mindful about it. Now, there's an argument to be made that once you become really fluent at a skill, you actually start doing it almost mindlessly. But when you're first playing around with things, you definitely want to be mindful so that you don't do things that are a little bit silly. Let's take a look at the first exercise. All right. In exercise number one, we're asked to consider two expressions, 2x plus 1 and 6x plus 3, and we're supposed to find the value of both expressions when x is 2. This is a skill you've done before, so what I'd like you to do is pause the video now and come up with the value of both of these two expressions when x is equal to 2. All right, let's go ahead and go through it. Let's activate our pen. Let's kind of lay it out like this. We have the expression 2x plus 1, and we want to evaluate it when x is 2. So we know our order of operations says that we have to do that multiplication by 2 first. So we're going to get 2 times 2, which is obviously 4, plus 1, and that gives us a result of 5. On the other hand, the expression 6x plus 3, well, for that, we'll put 2 in. Again, we have to remember our order of operations, and we have to do that multiplying first. But simple enough, we get a result of 15. All right, fine. Well, letter B asks us, what is the ratio of the larger outcome to the smaller outcome? All right, now you should understand ratios. Um, then it asks, why did the ratio turn out this way and what property could we use to justify all of this? Now, this is a little bit tricky, but if, if you think you have a good idea about what the ratio is, you should certainly be able to do that. Um, but why it turned out that way, pause the video right now and, and think about it. All right, let's take a look because this is all about mindful manipulations. First, let's take a look at the ratio. Remember, when we, when we have something that says a ratio of something to something, right, the larger to the smaller, right, we sometimes write it with colon notation, sometimes we write it as a division problem, but we get 3 or 3 to 1. In other words, right, this is how you always want to interpret ratios, the larger is three times the smaller. Now, the real question then becomes, why did it turn out that way? Or is that just a complete and utter coincidence, right? It, 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 maybe for other numbers, it wouldn't turn out to be a three to one ratio, or maybe it would. So look at the two expressions now. Look at the expression six x plus three, and look at the expression two x plus one. Can you think of any reason why this would be three times more than this? Well, I can. In fact, if I take three and I multiply it by two x plus one, using, of course, the distributive property, and remember what the distributive property says, it says I multiply this by each part of the sum inside, I'll get 2 times 3, which is 6x, plus 3. So in fact, 6x plus 3 gives us 3 times 2x plus 1, because 6x plus 3 is always 3 times 2x plus 1. In fact, watch this. Let's pick a different x. Let's say we picked x equals, I don't know, 5. 5 is kind of a nice number to work with. If we put it into 2x plus 1, we'd get 2 times 5, which is 10 plus 1, and it's 11. If we put it into our 6x plus 3, we'd get 6 times 5 plus 1 gives me 
Oops, not plus one. That's a mistake. I'm like, wait a second, I'm not getting the right ratio. I'd get 6x plus 3, and that would be 30 plus 3, or 33. And notice that 33 is 11 times 3. So no matter what value of x we picked, 6x plus 3 will always give us 3 times the value of 2x plus 1. And we should be able to see that by thinking about the distributive property. Let me scrub out my text, and why don't we go on to the next exercise. Okay, exercise number two gets into kind of the heart of the lesson, so I'd like to take a little bit of time on it. All right, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you an expression, and I'm going to tell you what it's equal to, but I'm not going to tell you the value of x. So in this problem, I'm telling you that we have the expression 3x plus 2. And for some value of x that I would substitute in here, the expression would end up equaling 7. All right, now, I don't want you solving for x, even if you know how, because that will miss the point of the exercise. Don't get me wrong. It's great if you can solve for x, but don't do it. All right, what I want to do is I want to determine the value of this expression and this expression for the same value of x that gave me 7. All right, and I want to do this by using a mindful manipulation. So take a look at 6x plus 4 and compare it to 3x plus 2. How do these two compare, right? Think about that for a moment. Pause the video if you need to. Did you figure it out? 6x plus 4 is twice 3x plus 2, right? That's by using the distributive property. I'm not going to write it all the way out, but the distributive property, right? We can see that, but 3x plus 2 is equal to 7, right? That's what it's equal to. So 6x plus 4 must be 14. Got it? That might be a little bit tricky. We're going to be looking at this more. Now let's take a look at 3x plus 5. Well, how does 3x plus 5 compare to 3x plus 2? Think about that for a minute. Can you mindfully manipulate this M and M? Uh, I mean, not the candy, right? Can you mindfully manipulate this to try to get the 3x plus 2 involved? Pause the video and see if you can get the right answer. All right, let's take a look. Here, we're actually going to use a different property. No distribution here. I'm going to recognize that 5 is the same as 2 plus 3. Now, this might seem like a funny step, but I think you will have to agree that 5 is the same as 2 plus 3. And now watch what I'm going to pull. I'm going to decide to add the 3x and the 2, and then the 3. Think about it that for a moment. What property did I just use? Did you get it? I used the associative property. right? The associative property says if I'm adding 1, 2, 3 things, I can add any two that I want first before I add the third one, but oh, ding, 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 we have a winner. 3x plus 2 is 7, and then I just have another 3 more. So 3x plus 5 must always equal 10 when 3x plus 2 equals 7. These are kind of fun, aren't they? But you have to be able to play around especially with two properties, the distributive property and, to a certain extent, the associative property. I don't know how much the commutative is going to come into play today, but we'll see. Let's scrub that out. Let's move on to the next problem. All right, exercise number three. Here's a big one. Here's where we want to start to develop a little bit of fluency with mindful manipulation. So same idea as the last exercise. So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of turn you loose on this one in a second. We've got an expression 2x plus 5, right? That's the thing that we're basing everything on, and it's got a value of 10. Again, don't solve for x. Kudos if you can, but don't do it. All right, what we want to do is mindful manipulations now on each of these expressions to try to figure out what they're equal to. Again, this is kind of tricky, especially letter G, but I'm sure that many of you will be up to the challenge there. Pause the video now and take some time, okay? See what you can do. What we'll do is when we start the video again, I'll go through a couple of them, then I'll let you have another chance to pause in case you're having a rough time. But pause the video now, take as much time as you need to see what you can do on this lesson. All right, let's take a look. So again, what we always want to be doing in these mindful manipulation problems is we want to be looking at the expression that we're trying to figure out the value of, 
versus the expression that we're starting with. Hopefully this one was pretty easy because it was similar to the one that we did last time, right? I can say that 4x plus 10 is simply twice 2x plus 5. Again, all that is is the distributive property, right? And since I know that 2x plus 5 has a value of 10, 4x plus 10 must have a value of 20. Got it? Let's take a look at b as well. So now I'm looking at 2x plus 20, and I want to compare that to 2x plus 5. All right, well, what can I say? This is actually very similar to the last problem as well. I can say that 2x plus 20 would be the same as 2x plus 5 plus 15. I would imagine many of you might not put this step in. All right, many of you might skip directly to this, directly to this associative step, right, where we can say that 2x plus 20 is the same as 2x plus 5, our winner, plus another 15. Well, since I know 2x plus 5 is 10, I can now just add 15 to it and get 25. All right, let's pause the video again and see if you can do the rest of them, if you haven't already. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. Let's take a look at C. 2x plus 1, again, versus 2x plus 5. This one might be a little bit trickier, right? How do you take 2x plus 1 and make it into 2x, or involve 2x plus 5? Well, again, kind of skipping over some steps, hopefully we could see this, right? 2x plus 1 will be the same as 2x plus 5 minus 4. Now let me just kind of group it so that you can really see the structure. Right, we want to think about 2x minus 5 as being a single quantity. That's why I put it in parentheses. Oftentimes people think that parentheses tell you to do whatever's inside them first, and that's one way to interpret them. But I think it's most helpful to interpret parentheses as, hey, I want to treat everything inside of that as one number. So I can now say that this must be 10 minus 4, and that's 6. All right, let's take a look at some more of them. Negative 2x minus 5. This is another situation of the distributive property. So negative 2x minus 5 can be thought of as negative 1 times 2x plus 5, right? Again, just the distributive property, but then that would be negative 1 times 10, and we would get negative 10. 10x plus 25. I mean, let me put my 2x plus 5 up here. How do we get there, right? Well, hopefully you'd see Again, using the distributive property. See how often we use the distributive property? Probably formally more often than the other two. Right? I know that 10x plus 25 can be thought of as 5 times 2x plus 5. And again, because 2x plus 5 can be treated as a single quantity, i.e. 10, I can say that's 5 times 10, and that expression must be 50. All right, let's do letter F. Letter F is actually very similar to letter C. Maybe the subtraction's a little bit trickier, but 2x minus 5 can be thought of as 2x plus 5, but then I have to subtract 10, right? So again, using the associative property, which says I can group this in any way I want, I get a result of 0. Oh, you got to like that. Okay, I hope my head wasn't bobbing and weaving too much across the page. Let's take a look at the challenge. Now, in the challenge, what we're looking at down here is we're trying to manipulate 6x plus 20, but that is a challenge. You know, you, you kind of think to yourself, well, I mean, if I multiply 2x plus 5, let me get my 2x plus 5. We'll just write it right here. If I take my 2x plus 5 and I multiply it by 3, right, well, that doesn't quite get me there. You know, it gets me 6x plus 15, but I need 6x plus 20, so that's not big enough. Oh, but now maybe I combine a couple operations. Maybe I say this. Well, let me do 3 times 2x plus 5, because I know that's going to get me 6x plus 15, but then I have to add on another 5, right, in order to get me my... 6x plus 20. But now, remember, we look at 2x plus 5 as a single quantity, 
So I'm going to put a 10 in there, add 5. I now have 30 plus 5 for 35. All right. Wow. That is a lot of blue on the sheet. Let's, uh, let's scrub that away and let's take a look at the next problem. All right. Last problem of the lesson. I wanted to get something going other than just multiplication and division and subtraction and addition. So take a look at exercise number four. Multiple choice problem. But even in multiple choice problems, we're always going to look to justify and show our work, okay? We just have four choices now. Anyway, in exercise number four, we're told that we have the expression 3x minus 4, and it's equal to negative 3 for some value of x, and it is. All right, we want to figure out what the value of this expression is. So why don't we write that down here so that we can kind of play around with it. We have 3x minus 4 squared plus 6. Whoops, I don't know where what happened there. Go back to my pen. Plus 6x minus 8. Now, obviously, somehow we've got to get 3x minus 4 involved, right? Well, it's, it's clearly right here, so that's not a problem. The real question is, what do we do with this? So if you think you know, pause the video and try to work through this problem. All right, let's take a look at it. Well, nothing that I'm going to do with this. I'm going to just leave it as 3x minus 4 squared. But then I'm going to write this as 2 times 3x minus 4. Right, so again, I'm looking at this 3x minus 4 not as a binomial, which it is, it's got two terms, but as a single quantity. Because I know that single quantity, I know this single quantity is equal to negative 3. So now I can simply say this expression must be negative 3 squared plus 2 times negative 3. Remember, a negative times a negative is always a positive, folks. Don't use your calculator if you don't need to. 2 times negative 3 is a negative, and 9 plus negative 6 is positive 3. There we go. That might help you a little bit when something comes up like this on a standardized exam. Anyway, let's scrub this out. Get rid of my text. Come on. There we go. All right. So that was our lesson on seeing structure. Thank you for joining me for another Common Core Algebra 1 lesson from eMath Instruction. I'm Kirk Weiler. Remember, you can access the worksheet and a homework for this lesson by clicking into the video's description. Until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems. Bye for now.